Hey there students, um, on this group we're going to be going over a related rates problem. We're going to be focusing on a cone example um, in this uh, presentation. We're going to be looking at a conical tank to be specific, okay? So let's take a look at the, uh, what the problem says. It says, um, water runs out of a conical tank at 7 feet cube per minute. The tank has a base, of, base radius of 10 feet and a depth of 12 feet. How fast is the water level falling when the water is 5 feet deep? It's always good to make a sketch of the situation so you can really understand uh, what the problem is saying. All right, so this is your conical tank right here, and uh, water is, uh, is constantly flowing out of this conical tank. All right, so this is the water right here in your conical tank, uh, and it's flowing out. It's flowing out. Um, it's flowing out at a rate of seven feet cubed. Per minute. Okay, so what is this measure right here? This is the this is the change in what the rate of change in what feet cube. What what our dimension is cube? We know length is is feet, area is square, and volume is cube. So just based on looking at this dimension of this uh, rate right here, we can automatically conclude that this is dv dt. All right, because t is minutes and volume is um, is in feet cube. All right, so this tells me that this is the flow rate, the, the flow rate um, of the the rate at which the volume is changing as water is being evacuated from this conical tank. All right, so you can always use your units to really um, help you determine what component of your related rate is what. All right, so we can also use information we're given to find all the components of this uh, of this measurement. I drew a cross section um, of the conical tank. I just did a right a right triangle because that's sufficient based on the information we're given. We're told that the base radius is 10 feet, so I know that um, the radius right here is going to be 10. That that is fixed; it doesn't change. That's 10, and I also know that. Um, the depth of my conical tank is 12 feet. So from top to bottom, that is always 12 feet. Okay, that's, that, these are the dimensions of, of my uh, of my conical tank. All right, but we know that this is a dynamic situation. This water level here keeps changing; it keeps falling. Okay, at any point in time t, there's going to be a specific radius r, and then a specific height or depth h. Um, or yeah, let's call it H for depth H. Okay, these two keep falling until they get to zero, and then the tank has no more water in it. All right. So what is the relation? What is the what is the formula that relates the height, the radius, and the content of the tank, which is known as the volume? Well, it's the volume formula, as you might have thought. So what is the volume of a cone? Remember from in geometry that the volume of a cone V is basically a third of the volume of the uh, cylinder with the same base and height. Okay, so one third pi r square h. Okay, so this is the formula, the formula that relates all three um, ver um, variables. All right, if you look at the question, the question asks for how fast the water level is falling. Okay, how fast the water level is falling. So what we are basically going to be finding in this problem is we're going to be trying to find the h dt. Okay, because height is the water level. All right, so how fast is this? Is um, is this falling at a specific point in time, namely when the height is five feet? All right. So since we're looking for dH dt, we all we also know that dV dt is seven. What about the radius though? When the water level is five feet deep, what is happening with the? At what rate is the radius changing? We know the radius is changing, but we're not given any information here, so. What are we going to do? Well, we have to express the radius in terms of the height because we're not given any information about the radius. So how can we express the radius in terms of the height? You see this nice triangle we have right here? We're going to use some geometrical tools to do it, namely the similar triangle, okay? Since these two triangles are similar, the big right triangle and the small right triangle, we can use um, the similarity idea to to uh, find what to express r in terms of h, all right. So what do we do? We know that 
uh, since these triangles are similar corresponding size and proportion, so we can say the small radius r over, let me change the color to black, so we can say that um, the uh, floating radius is r right here, r, small radius over the big radius, the size are corresponding, is equal to or is in proportion to the small height h over the entire i height, which is 20. Okay? The goal again is to express r in terms of h so that we can find the h dt. So how can I get r by itself? So all I just have to do is multiply both sides by 10. So multiply this by 10. Multiply that by 10. These two cancel out. So we're going to have um, r, the radius, equals 10h over 12. And I can reduce that, that uh, can be reduced into r, divide both sides by 2, equals 5 over 6h. So there goes your radius, all right? So if it's come back to this formula v, so we write the formula v equals 1 third pi r square h. I need r gone, so I'm going to substitute r for this 5 over 6h, okay? Because we we only know about the height at a point in time and the h t. So I'm going to write this as v equals one third pi. Instead of r square, I'm going to put in five over six h because all I just want to deal with is h and v. That's all I need. Okay? I don't need any more headache. So put a square there because r is in squared times h. Okay. Let's simplify this formula. So we're going to have v equals one third pi. And then distribute the square to everything. To the 5, we'll have 25. To the 6, we'll have 36. To the 8, we'll have h squared times h. Okay? Um, simplify it a little bit further. We have the volume v equals, we'll multiply the, the numbers. We'll have 25 over 108 pi. And then h squared times h is h to the third. All right? Now we are free to differentiate to uh, isolate the VDP HDT, okay? So we're going to be differentiating implicitly with respect to time. So on the left side, we're going to have the uh, derivative of V to the 1. This is just um, 1, because like V to the first power. So the derivative of V to the 1 is just uh, 1 times, because we're using the chain rule, the VDT, right? Because we're differentiating. Uh, implicit, uh, implicit, implicitly with respect to time, all right? Um, on the right side, we're going to be doing the VDT of this entire expression, 205 over 108. Oh, well, 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 not 205, I'm sorry. 25, <laughs> 25 over 108 times pi h to the third. I know many of you can do this in your head. I'm just trying to show all the steps so you don't get confused, okay? So 1 times dv dt is dv dt. And since we have a constant, since 25 over 108 pi a constant, we can factor them out. They don't get affected by dv dt since they're constants and they don't change. 25 pi over 108 times, uh, um, I made a mistake here. This is d dt. Right. It's d dt derivative respect to time of uh, the right side. I said this one right here is d dt. So d dt of that. All right. I haven't differentiated anything yet. So this derivative doesn't affect this part. It's just h to the third. We're differentiating respect to time. All right. So of d dt of h to the third. Okay. Now I'm just going to differentiate h to the third. All right, so bringing it down, we have dv dt equals 25 pi over 108. And it was the derivative of h to the third. Using the power rule is 3h squared. And in chain rule, we have to differentiate h respect to time, which is the h dt. Okay? All right, so now... Uh, I'm going to use information I was provided with to plug in the values I know, and then we can isolate the h to t, and that'll be the result. Okay? So we talked about this before. The volume, the VDT is the rate at which the volume is changing, which is the rate at which water is coming out of the tank. So the VDT is uh, negative seven feet cubed per minute. 
All right? It's minus because the volume is going down. When water drains out of the tank, the volume is going down, okay? And then H is a height at that point in time. We're looking for the rate at which the height is changing at a particular point in time, time namely when the height is 5 feet. Okay? And then the HDT is basically what we're looking for. All right, so let's plug in these two pieces of information into this equation and then solve for the HDT. Or you can solve this equation for the HDT and plug in these two pieces of information. You get exactly the same thing, all right? I'll leave out the units. We'll talk about the units when we're done, all right? So dvdt is negative 7 equals 25. Uh, well, I can multiply 3 times 25, right? Oh, wait, oh, alternatively, I can even reduce because 3 goes into 108, right? So uh, 3 goes here 1, and 3 goes into 108 36 times. Uh, 36, all right, all right, 36. So it makes my life easier, so I can write this as 25 pi over 36 times, uh, for h, I can just put 5 square, 5 square is, uh, I just put 5 square, 5 square is 25, right, the HDT, I'm just putting it there so you can see the substitution I made, I'm plugging in 5 for h square, right, okay, so let's go ahead, we are going to have negative 7 equals, 5 square is 25, 25 times 25 is 625, so we have 625 over 36 pi, the H, uh, the HCT. Okay, 625 power 36. Uh, now to um, finally isolate the HCT, I just need to eliminate, get rid of this coefficient right here. So all of these are multiplied by the reciprocal of this. So on the on the right side, I'm going to times by uh, 36 over 625 pi. All right. On the left side and also on the right side, 36 over 625 pi. And uh, that should give us the answer. So on, so uh, over here, if you notice, 625 pi cancels with those two. And then 36 cancels with that. So I'm going to switch it around using a reflexive property of equality. So I have the HDT equals... Negative 7 times 36 is negative 252, so equals negative 252 over 625 pi. Okay? So, um, the question is as follows. What is the unit of measure? What is the measure of height, h? h is in, height is in feet, right? So feet, fair, dt was a measure of time, and this problem is minute, okay? So this is a this is the rate at which the um, the height is falling when the height is five feet deep. So we can write it down. So uh, when the water level when the water level is five feet deep, <laughs> the water level water level is falling, falling is negative, okay, is falling at 252 over 625 pi feet, uh, feet per minute, okay, so there you have it. So thank you so much uh, for paying attention to this um, presentation. Um, please uh, subscribe to my videos and share with your friends uh, so you can get future updates on more problems to help you understand uh, the whole process of calculus. And um, if you like the video, you can click like right here. Uh, if you have any issues or concerns, post a comment or send me an email. I'll be glad to address it. And then for a collection of more videos, you can visit my site at mathgoodserve.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day. Thanks.